Well, greetings and salutations. This is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'm just going to briefly touch on all of the foods that I eat in a typical day on this low carb, high fat diet. Now, a few videos ago, I talked about the uh, blood test results that I got back after being on uh, low carb, high fat for about four months. Now, in the comments of that video, lots of people kept asking me whether I could show you exactly the foods that I eat uh, in order to maintain this lifestyle. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I eat in a typical day in order to maintain a low carb, high fat lifestyle. So for breakfast, I normally have fried mushrooms. There are virtually no carbohydrates in mushrooms. Um, also, I have uh, cream cheese with them, so they're kind of creamy mushrooms. And personally, I'd like to cook them in a garlic uh, flavored oil. So essentially, I've got garlic mushrooms for breakfast. Now you can cook them without the garlic flavoring and just have regular uh, creamy mushrooms. Now I have done a video on how to make creamy garlic mushrooms. If you want to make them for breakfast and you don't fancy the garlic side of it, then just use um, an oil that hasn't been infused with garlic. Also for a treat, I will sometimes put in a, just a little bit of tomato puree. There is quite a few carbohydrates in tomato puree, but a, a small amount, um, they're absolutely fine. And that just gives the mushrooms a nice pinky color, but it also gives it a slight sweetness and a very slightly uh, more tangy flavor. Now, if I'm feeling particularly hungry, I may throw in uh, some eggs and possibly even if I'm really hungry, I may throw in some bacon and some sausages as well. Um, but it's not actually that often that I do it. Normally I get by just on the creamy mushrooms and they're more than adequate to see me through the day until my main meal later on in the day. So for my main evening meal, um, quite often I'll go for something like this. Now this, is a frozen ready meal that I've made myself. And what we've got here is essentially stew uh, made up of meat and vegetables and some frozen vegetables. Just a small portion because this contains carrots and peas which are quite high in carbohydrates. Now I make these in batches and I've got a batch going at the moment which I'll show you shortly. But I also want to show you this. Now this is a rice substitute made from something called konjac flour. The beautiful thing about it is it has virtually no carbohydrates and virtually no calories. So I use this to bulk up the meal. So I've got a nice big plate full of food and there's virtually no carbohydrates in it whatsoever. All I do is I'll heat up the, the rice in here while this is defrosting in the microwave. And then when it's fully defrosted, I'll add it to the rice and then we'll just kind of mix it all up together and you've got yourself a nice, big, bulky and flavoursome meal. Now I cook these in batches and I literally only have to do one batch every two or three weeks. And I cook them in this. This is an eight litre slow cooker. And as you can see, hopefully right now, I've got a batch going at the moment. Now it's incredibly simple to do. At the very bottom of this container, I have two large pieces of beef. You can use any kind of meat that you want or you don't have to use meat at all. Um, but basically I buy the meat frozen, defrost it the night before, then just pop it into the bottom of the container. Then I just top everything up with frozen vegetables and stock. Now the vegetables are what make up the bulk of the slow cooking batch. Uh, but you have to be really careful about which vegetables you use. Now, for example, hopefully you can see this and they're not too shiny. I've got uh, British broccoli and cauliflower florets here and cauliflower florets here. Now these are two grams of carbohydrates per 100 grams. Now you can also get um, mixed vegetables, uh, but anything with things like peas and carrots in, they are double the carbohydrates of these things. So I tend to stay away from these, or if I'm going to include them in a ready meal, I will only have a very small portion of them uh, so that it just keeps the carbohydrates down. But generally speaking, broccoli, cauliflower, also things like asparagus and spinach, you can pretty much put as much of those in as you want, as well as mushrooms. I've actually run out of mushrooms now, but in this batch, there is an entire bag full of frozen mushrooms. 
And what makes it so simple is because everything is frozen, uh, you get more nutrients in vegetables when they're frozen because uh, the, the nutrients apparently are, are captured um, at the time of freezing, which is normally a few hours after they've been picked. Whereas if you use fresh vegetables, they may have sat in your fridge for, you know, sort of days and can be kind of breaking down. Now, I don't know how much of that's true or not, but I'm more than happy using frozen vegetables and they've worked out really, really well because it just makes life so much more simple. Now I've got a big chest freezer, so it's really easy to just buy this stuff in bulk and then you just make a batch as and when you need it without having to think too much about it. Now in order to add flavor, I tend to use things like this. I use garlic granules or sometimes um, chopped frozen chopped garlic as well, which just makes life uh, very convenient. Um, I also use onion granules. Now you have to be a bit careful with onion because onions do contain quite a lot of um, carbohydrates. So I tend to use onion granules, which just seem to be uh, stronger tasting and you need kind of less of them. I'll also throw in a little bit of tomato paste. Uh, what I'm using here is sun-dried tomato paste. Generally for an eight litre pot, I will use about half a jar of one of these. And my favorite, Herbs de Province. Now for one large batch, I will usually use about a third of um, a jar of this. And also a little bit of ginger uh, goes down really well too. Now for the stock, I just tend to use uh, stock cubes. It's easier. I know you can make your own stock if you want to, but for me, I'm trying to go for convenience. Uh, so it's not a big deal. It's not an ordeal to do. You have to be a bit careful with the uh, stock cubes because they can be a little bit high in carbohydrates. This particular one is 0.9 grams per 500 grams and one cube will make up 500 grams. So what they tend to do is use about three stock cubes in a large batch. And it generally works out just enough to make enough liquid to cover up all of the vegetables and the meat in there. Now some days if I'm feeling really lazy um, I can have like a whole tin of chicken korma. I mean, Sainsbury's do a particularly good one. Uh, this is very nice tasting and uh, the entire can is 6.4 grams of carbohydrates because it's quite a fatty meal. And if you have that with the konjac rice, that makes for a real hearty meal. Very, very quick, very simple. And like I say, you've only, you've only actually consumed uh, less than 10 carbohydrates. Uh, so I sometimes go for that combination. Now, if I fancy a snack during the day, uh, I will quite often go for a salad and some sort of fish. Pretty much, you can have pretty much any sort of oily fish you want. Um, I tend to go for tuna or sardines. Now, most tins of fish are pretty low in carbohydrates. Um, for example, this tuna here, per half a can is 0.9 grams of carbohydrates, which is fine. Uh, and this, the whole tin in here, which is sardines in tomato sauce, which are really tasty, um, the, there is uh, one point, I think it's 1.8 grams of carbs, which is nothing, that's fantastic. And then all you've got to do is serve that up on a bed of mostly uh, lettuce and salad. Um, again, you have to go a little bit careful on onions, don't want to overdo it on the tomatoes, because again, they've got quite a lot of carbs in them. But you can have as much green leafy stuff as you want. So if you, you know, you've got spinach leaves or watercress or um, most lettuce, um, you just serve that up with um, some uh, fish on top and that makes quite a hearty little snack. Now for dessert, one of my go-tos is jelly and cream. Absolutely lovely, whatever flavor you get. You have to be careful which jelly you get. I go for the sugar-free one and that has virtually no carbohydrates in it whatsoever. And I like when I've got it in stock to use um, extra thick cream, which is really nice. And again, incredibly low in carbohydrates. Uh, two tablespoons of that is less than 0.5 grams of uh, carbohydrates. Um, otherwise, if I haven't got this in stock, um, I tend to go for the squirty cream. Uh, again, you have to be a bit careful which squirty creams you go for. I use Anchor Extra Thick. It's not as sweet as the other ones, um, but it has much less uh, carbohydrates in it. Um, so there, it works out there are less than seven grams of carbohydrates in an entire can. Um, which is pretty good, although I, I wouldn't recommend having an entire can. Now, my go-to snack, uh, my main one is peanut butter, and I will just have um, a spoonful now and again of peanut butter, and it, it's really filling. Uh, interestingly enough, if you have like a small spoonful of peanut butter, um, within about 20 minutes, you just won't fancy any more. 
Um, it's, it's strange how it works, but because it's mostly kind of proteins, they fill you up and they make you feel satiated. Another treat is uh, this. This or these are fat bombs. They're like little chocolates for people on the low carb, high fat diet. And they are basically made up of coconut oil, high quality grass fed butter, a small amount of unsweetened cocoa powder, some vanilla extract, and a sweetener of your choice. Essentially, all you do is you melt all of those ingredients into a, a, a saucepan, and then when it's all liquid, you pour it into ice cube trays and stick them in the freezer, and you've got yourself some little low-carb, high-fat chocolates. Obviously, you don't want to be gorging on these, but what I find is once you've had one or two, you actually don't want any more. They're very, very filling, very, very satiating. They also give your body uh, the high quality fats that you need to consume in order to do low carb, high fat successfully. So there we go. Those are the foods that I've been eating for the last four months on this low carb, high fat lifestyle. And once again, I must reiterate, this is good for me personally. It may not be for everyone. And this is not something I'm recommending that everybody should go out and do. Um, it's taken me pretty much close to a decade to try to find the food that I can eat without them making me ill. And I have seen over the last four months, especially with the blood test results coming in really good, um, but I've seen over the last four months, I'm slowly starting to get my life back because when I was eating what most people would call normal foods, I was having a terrible time. I was ill all the time. I was lethargic all the time. Um, I just, it was like the modern day diet just didn't agree with me. And now I'm doing this fairly old fashioned diet. I'm, I'm eating the foods, the kind of foods that our great grandparents would have eaten. And what I'm finding is I'm, like I say, I'm starting to get my life back. My tiredness is going away. The headaches are going away. The, you know, the, my general state of health and well-being is so much better or has been so much better over the last four months uh, since I've been doing this lifestyle. So for me, I think I should be doing this for the rest of my life. But um, again, this is not for everyone. And I do urge anyone who's interested in this to go and do your own research and your own finding out um, because it can be dangerous if you get it wrong. So anyway, there we go. That's it from me. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great rest of the day and I will see you very, very soon in the next video. Till then, take care.